जय हिंद स्टूडेंट्स बच्चे लोग आप लोग कैसे हैं आई होप यू ऑल आर फिट एंड फाइन एंड आर इन वेरी हाई स्पिरिट राइट सो टूडे स्टूडेंट्स वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक एंड दैट इज इम्पल्स इम्पल्स रिसीव ड्यूरिंग एन इम्पैक्ट सो वॉट इम्पल्स एक्चुअली मीन्स विल डिस्कस इट क्वालिटेटिवली एज वेल एज विल डिस्कस इट क्वान्टिटेटिवली and then we will also discuss the law of conservation of momentum along with its mathematical verification and some few applications right so let's start with the concept of impulse before we start about this particular topic uh let's first consider a situation when a ball a cricket ball is hit by a bat or a football is kicked by a player or a nail is struck into a wooden plank with the help of a hammer students imagine all these conditions right i repeat a cricket ball being hit by a bat or a football which is being kicked by a player or a nail which is being struck inside a wooden board with the help of a hammer these are the cases where the impact of the force it lasts or it stays for a very very short duration of time and also during that short duration of time the force of impact is not constant isn't it so these are the cases where first the force of impact is for a very short duration right so the time during which the force lasts that is very very small right and second is the force is varying it's not constant the force is varying it varies with time so independently we can't measure time and we can't measure this varying force independently so basically if you plot a graph between force and time so it should be somewhat like this the force of impact when a hammer is made to strike a nail then that force it varies with time and this time span this time span this time span it is very very small it can be represented by del t this is the symbol for del it is represented to symbolize very very small vanishingly small or infinitesimally small so during this very small span or during this very small interval of time the force it varies it is not constant so it won't be possible for us to measure this varying force or to measure this very very short duration of time during which the force lasts is it students so what we do is we consider an average force suppose this is the average force this is the average force this varying force can't be measured so conveniently we consider the average force now it is found that this quantity which is the average force multiplied by the time during which this average force lasts it is very convenient to measure this physical quantity and student this physical quantity is known as impulse this is known as impulse <coughs> so point to be noted is that the impulse received during an impact by a body may be quantitatively defined as the product of the magnitude of this average force and the small duration of time during which this force lasts so this is how impulse can be quantitatively defined there is another definition as well which after deriving the mathematical part then i will try to state it right so what about its si unit then 
the SI unit of force is Newton. The SI unit of time is second. So the SI unit of impulse is Newton second. Right? Also, Newton, as you are aware, is a unit of force. Force is mass into acceleration. You are aware of this. 1 Newton is 1 kg meter per second square. Therefore, unit SI unit of impulse is kg meter per second square multiplied by second. So what we get is kg meter per second. Per second square multiplied by second will be left with per second. So this is the SI unit of impulse. Right students? So again I repeat, there are certain instances like when a cricket ball is being hit by a bat, then what happens is the force of impact that lasts for a very very short duration of time. And the force I'm talking about, that also varies with time. So this is how it is graphically represented, the variation of force with time. So we can't measure this varying force independently. So for conveniently, what we consider is, we consider the average force during this short span of time. And in such a case, the product of this average force and the short duration during which this force lasts, that physical quantity gives us impulse. So impulse received during an impact is defined as the product of the magnitude of the average force and the short duration of time during which the force lasts. And SI unit of impulse is kg meter per second. Right? It's same as that of momentum. So we will see the relationship between impulse and momentum. So now what you consider is, let's try to get the relationship between impulse and momentum. Now as per Newton's law, we are aware, as per Newton's law, we are aware that this average force, it is given by mass into acceleration, right? It is given by mass into acceleration. It is given by mass, what is acceleration? It is the time rate change in the velocity. Suppose V is the final velocity, U is the final velocity, U is the initial velocity. And this change is taking place in very short duration of time, del t. Del t is this very small duration of time during which its velocity changes from u to v. Right? So you can substitute this f average over here. Therefore, impulse it will be given by m v minus u divided by del t multiplied by del t. So del t, del t cancel out. So what we are left with is v minus u, which is mv minus m. Therefore, students, impulse is equal to m into v, mass into final velocity. That we are aware, it is the final momentum of the body. Momentum as we are aware, linear momentum, it's denoted by small letter p. Product of mass multiplied by the initial velocity of the body. That will give us the initial momentum of the body. And final momentum minus initial momentum of the body is actually the change in the momentum of the body. It is actually the change in the momentum of the body. So this is another valid statement of impulse. So impulse received during an impact by a body is also defined as the change in the momentum of the body. So students always remember, in any numerical when you are supposed to find the value of impulse, then simply find out the change in momentum of the body. That would be numerically equal to the impulse received by the body during an impact. So it is but obvious that the unit of momentum, unit of impulse, it is same. Unit of momentum is also kg meter per second. Unit of impulse is also kg meter per second. Right? So this is how impulse can be defined either as product of f average and the small duration of time or as the change in the momentum of the body right now let's consider the conservation of the linear momentum we are already aware of the term momentum momentum signifies the total amount of matter contained in a body isn't it 
And mathematically, momentum, as we are aware, it's given by the product of the mass of the body and its velocity. So, let's discuss conservation of linear momentum. Actually, law of conservation of linear momentum, it states that in the absence of any external unbalanced force, the total momentum of the system always remain conserved. Conserved means total momentum of the system will always remain constant. What it means is that in the absence of any external force, the initial momentum of the system must be exactly equal to the final momentum of the system. Right? So, the statement is Let's first discuss the statement of law of conservation of momentum. In the absence of any external force, in the absence of any external force, that is, when net external force acting on a system is zero, then momentum of the system is constant. Momentum of a system is constant means initial momentum of the system must be exactly equal to the final momentum of the system. So this is what we are going to verify. So students, let's again concentrate on this statement. Law of conservation of linear momentum, it states that in the absence of any external force, that is when F is equal to zero, then the momentum of the system always remain constant or conserved, which suggests that the initial momentum of the system is exactly equal to the final momentum of the system. Right? So this is the statement of law of conservation of momentum. So now let's verify it mathematically. Right? Let's verify this. Let's do the mathematical part. Now what to do is, in the absence of an external force means, consider a system comprising of two bodies and they are isolated. Isolated means they can mutually interact upon each other but no net external force acts on it. Right? So suppose this is a system, this is a system, this is an isolated system. Isolated system means no net force external force acts on this system and suppose the system comprises of these two bodies A and this is body B. This is of mass M1, this is of mass M2. Suppose it is moving with initial velocity U1 and this is moving with initial velocity U2. Let us consider this or they might move along the same direction as well like this. Let us consider they to be moving along the same direction. Obviously if u1 is greater than u2, then at some point of time this body will be able to strike body B, isn't it? So, they must be interacting with each other, right? So, what it means is, isolated system means, it's a system in which no net external force acts on it. External force acting on the system is zero. So, that's the meaning of isolated system. The bodies which constitutes the system may interact with each other. They are known as the internal forces. Some total of internal forces of a system is always zero. Right? So these are some basic fundamental facts which we all must be aware of. Right? So, let us consider. What is the initial momentum of the system? So, initial momentum of the system is m1 u1 plus m2 u. Here means initial momentum of body A is m1 u1, initial momentum of body B is m2 u2. So the initial momentum of the system is m1 u1 plus m2 u2. This is initial momentum of the system. This is P initial. This is the initial momentum of the system. Let us consider they collide against each other. 
if u1 is greater than u2 which are considered then at some juncture at some instant body a will strike body b isn't it so suppose this is the scenario after collision suppose body a acquires final velocity v1 and body b acquires final velocity v2 this is before collision this is suppose before collision and let us consider this to be the situation after collision right the same two bodies after collision suppose they have acquired final losses of v1 and v2 moving along the same straight path we are considering one dimensional motion so what will be the final momentum of the system let's check final momentum of this system will be p final p stands for momentum so final momentum of the system is m1 v1 plus m2 v2 put this as equation number 1 and let us consider this to be equation number 2 right so so what we have considered is a system comprising of two bodies a and b of masses m1 and m2 respectively to be moving initially with velocity u1 u2 along the same straight path if u1 is greater than u2 then at some juncture the bodies will collide and suppose they keep moving along the same straight path they are considering one dimensional motion so after collision suppose the two bodies acquire final velocity of v1 and v2 so initial momentum of the system would be m1 u1 plus m2 u2 final momentum of the system would be m1 v1 plus m2 v2 right now what happens is during the impact during collision when the two bodies collide the diagram would be somewhat like this this will be the diagram these are the two bodies when they collide this is a this is b this is of mass m1 this is of mass m2 suppose they collide and for a very short duration of del t del t is the time during which they collide right so they will exert force upon each other suppose they exert force of fab and fba with each other right we have discussed newton's third law students whenever the two bodies interact with each other then forces in nature always exist in equal and opposite pairs what i mean to say is that during the interaction of the two bodies the forces are equal in magnitude but oppositely directed clear students so as per newton's third law what we do is fab it should be equal to minus fba right so as per newton's third law which is the action reaction to each and every action there exists an equal and opposite reaction so these two forces must be equal and opposite it should be equal to minus f b a put this as equation number 3 equal sign suggests that both the forces are of equal magnitude negative sign suggests that they are oppositely directed f a b may be considered to be the force exerted by body b on body a f b a may be considered to be the force exerted by body a on body b so they form action reaction pair now what to do is let's make use of these three equations so as to obtain the result so f a b is equal to minus f f a b is equal to minus f b a now force students as per newton's second law we know that force is the time rate change in the momentum time rate change in the momentum it is the force exerted by body b on body a right it is the force exerted by body b on body a this is the force exerted by body a on body b so this is the force acting on body a right so it will be given by the time rate change in the momentum of body a as per newton's second law we know that force is given by time rate change in the momentum v minus u divided by t this is the formula for force so f a b is the force exerted by body b on body a this is the net force on body a so what to do is mass of body a is m1 
its final velocity of body is v1 initial velocity of body is comes to be u1 and the time during which the impact is taking place that's a very very short duration of time that is comes to be delta suppose and it should be equal to it should be equal to negative of force exerted by body a on body b so this is the force on body b force on body b would be given by time rate change in the momentum of body a as per newton's second law so it would be mass of the second body final velocity of the second body minus initial velocity of the second body divided by the short duration of time during which the collision takes place that is delta right students so what do we get is try to rearrange the terms and we should get the result so what do we get delta delta get cancelled so what do we get m1 v1 minus m1 u1 is equal to minus m2 v2 minus minus will give us plus m2 u2 so let's try to rearrange the terms so m1 v1 plus m2 v2 is equal to m1 u1 plus m2 u2 this we have discussed students it is the final momentum of the system and this we are aware it is the initial momentum of the system so it is constant so this is how we can easily mathematically verify the law of conservation of linear momentum so students this law states that in the absence of an external force that is i am talking about an isolated system the total momentum of the system always remain constant or conserved that is the initial momentum of the system is exactly equal to the final momentum of the system so this is the mathematical verification of this particular law right so let's try to apply this law we have discussed in newton's third law the recoiling of a gun right it can be explained in terms of the conservation of momentum as well then we have discussed the propulsion of rocket how a swimmer is able to swim isn't it so all those concepts can also be explained with the help of law of conservation of linear momentum so let's consider the case of recoiling of a gun recoiling of a gun or a rifle suppose this is a gun and this is the trigger and this is the bullet suppose bullet is of mass small m the gun is of mass capital m the initial velocity of bullet is u the initial velocity of the gun is capital u and after the bullet is fired then its mass is m suppose its final velocity is v and the final velocity after firing of the bullet the final velocity of the gun is capital v let us assume that right so this is a system where no external force acts only by pressing the trigger the bullet will move in the forward direction and the gun tends to recoil so this is what i am going to prove it mathematically using the law of conservation of momentum so students these all are the internal forces right net external force acting on the system is zero so the total momentum of this system comprising of this gun and the bullet must be conserved just how we have discussed this is an isolated case so here the net external force is not acting so the net momentum of this system comprising of this gun and the bullet must be conserved so initial momentum must be equal to the final momentum so initial momentum must be equal to the final momentum in the absence of any external force this is internal force right no external force is acting right so in this case initial momentum of the system system comes
comprises of bullet and the gun right momentum is mass into velocity so initial momentum of the bullet is mass into initial velocity initial momentum of the gun is mass into its initial velocity and what about the final momentum mass into final velocity plus the final momentum of the gun would be mass of the gun multiplied by its final velocity now obviously initially the gun as well as the bullet are at rest therefore u is equal to capital u it should be equal to zero initially the bullet it's inside the gun and the gun itself is at rest so small u and capital u both are zero therefore what we get is m small v plus m into capital v or real in the terms we get capital v is equal to minus small m by capital m into small v now look mass they don't have any direction the scalars so this is velocity negative sign suggests that these two are oppositely directed the negative sign is suggesting the very fact that if the bullet moves in the forward direction suppose towards the positive x direction then the gun will move towards the negative x direction and this phenomena is known as recoiling of gun so this negative sign here suggests that the gun tends to exert a force in the backward direction the bullet moves in the forward direction the gun will exert a force in the backward direction and that backward jerk that is known as recoiling of the gun so this is one of the application of law of conservation of momentum similarly the propulsion of rocket it's also a very interesting topic that can also be explained on the basis of conservation of momentum but that topic will deal it separately so students i hope in this particular lecture we have discussed these three topics the concept of impulse its si unit its relation to the change in the momentum right then we have discussed the statement of the law of conservation of linear momentum its mathematical verification and this application of recoiling of gun so i hope students have understood the topic so do study well and we'll continue in the next lecture then right till then do take very good care of yourself and thank you